All right, welcome to Everyday HDR. Today I'm going to go over uh, how to batch process your uh, processed photos from Photomatix. Um, hopefully you batch process them from Photomatix. Also watching some of the other tutorials that I've shown about how to batch process in, in uh, Photomatix. Uh, this is really crucial to increase your workflow in post-processing, especially nowadays for me because I never realized that uh, having a kid would turn every free hour that you had previously into five minutes. So everything has to be condensed real quick. So doing this whole photography thing really starts to take up a lot of time. So right in front of you, as you see here, uh, this is how my folders look after I have processed my photos in Photomatix. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to batch process these in Photoshop. So normally there'd be uh, 15 to 30 different photos in here that were all processed in Photoshop or Photomatix. So if you could imagine 30 or 40 more of these little uh, thumbnails here, um, you can imagine how much faster your post-processing would be if you're batch processing in, in Photoshop as well as Photomatix. So let me go ahead and open this up. Um, batch processing works with actions that you've already previously made. So let's go ahead and make an action real quick. I've covered actions before, but I'm going to cover actions again real quick just so everybody knows how to do it. Um, in, in your palette over here, there should be uh, an actions uh, bar. It's a, it's a play button that looks like that. I have mine. I drag it down here because I've noticed I'm using ton of actions these days so it really helps to have mine down here if you don't have that play button in your uh, side panel go up to window um, and go to actions or alt f9 and that'll open up actions for you so since I already have it opened up I'm just gonna go with it from here so now I'm gonna create a new action to create a new action is just like making a new layer on any photo so you see that little thing the little tearaway page that's what we're gonna do we're gonna make a new one called example for batch. And then you press the record button and everything that you everything that you do right now is recorded into this uh, action so to speak. So let's just go as if we're doing uh, our post processing. M my normal post processing is uh, a denoise first and then a high pass sharpen of the denoise and then a curves and levels adjustment and that's always what I do 100% of the time for everything that I that I process. And then I go into all the, the crazy details that I'm going to make in that image later. So let's go ahead and, and do that real quick. So go to Filter, Noise, and uh, I'm going to go to Dust and Scratches, and go to 1. Press OK. I pretty much always do that because it gets all the little nitpicky uh, uh, noise splotches that HDR process happens in Photomatix. And go to Noise and go to uh, Reduce Noise. So I'm going to reduce the noise by 8, uh, preserve the details at 33%, reduce the color noise by 66%, and sharpen the details by 13%. Now let's bring that up to about 22%. 29%. That'll be good. Press OK. And you just wait for it. it takes a little bit of time. I would make a joke about drinking a beer right now, but someone took offense to me drinking beer in one of my last ones. So I'm not drinking a beer, I'm drinking water. Alright, so now I'm going to duplicate the layer. And I'm going to high pass sharpen what I just did. So go to filter, uh, other, high pass. Keep it at like 4.1 ish, 4, 4 to 5. I don't usually go any higher than that because I don't want it to be too abnormal looking. And then change that to a soft light. Now go down and add a levels adjustment and a curves adjustment. So at this point, this is how I want all my pictures that I'm going to bring in here after I've batch processed them to end up so that it's doing all that stuff for me. You know, that took maybe, I don't know, four or five minutes to do all that. Well, four or five minutes times 15 photos, you're looking at um, what's uh, about an hour, maybe an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes to do all that. And you can make your life really easy if you just use this batch actions. So go ahead and stop that from recording and we're just going to go ahead and close this. Uh, that was mainly me just showing you how to use actions. So now to, to set up Photoshop for batch processing, go to file, go to automate, and go to batch. So we're going to go to uh, set it to batch actions because that's what I'm showing you and set it to example for batch because that's the example action that we just made. 
So the source is going to come from a folder. We're not going to import it from somewhere. Um, we're not going to go to Bridge to get it. Uh, we're not going to go to the open files that are already in Photoshop. We're going to go to uh, a certain folder. That folder is going to be example. If you wanted to say include all subfolders, everything that's in those subfolders would also get batched, but I don't want that to happen. Um, override action open commands. Um, that would be you. Uh, in the event that your action called for opening a photo, it would pop up and say open this photo and you'd say yes or no. Um, don't worry about that because the, the action that we just made doesn't call for that. Suppress file open options dialogs that comes into play if you're opening a raw file and uh, it goes into camera raw. Suppress color profile warnings if by chance a color profile warning came up when you pulled in your Photoshop full file, that's what would happen. So the destination, I don't want there to be a destination, I want these to open up in Photoshop. So set the de destination to none and then just go ahead and press OK. So you're going to see it's going to open the first file and our action starts the noise reduction is starting. And for noise reduction does take quite a bit of time. I need to get some more RAM in my computer. Looking at probably about 8 more gigs. We'll see. And there you go. I have uh, that now it's opening up the second fold, the second image to do that same action. It's going to reduce the noise, it's going to add a high pass sharpen, it's going to add a curves layer, it's going to add an adjustment, uh, a levels adjustment layer. So now in the event that I had 15 of these photos to process and I'll do all that to the same, uh, to all 15 of them, the same action to all 15 of them. I could get up right now, I could walk away, I could go eat dinner, I could uh, go to the, the grocery store and get more beer, I mean water, and I could come back and all my photos will be opened up for me right here in Photoshop with the high pass done, with the levels done, and with the curves done. So now I can just go in and I can adjust the levels. I didn't adjust the levels before because I don't want the same level adjustment to happen on all the images. Now if you know that you want all the same adjustments to happen on all the images, then you can go ahead and do that. You can add a curves, you can add your levels, and you can go ahead and adjust them to your liking in the action. But just remember if you do that, it will remember that for every photo. So for me, I like to go in and do curves and levels individually for each photo. And then from here, I, I could add, uh, you know, hue saturations. I could start, you know, adding other things. I could put lightning in the background. I can do all kinds of different things right now. And then I can continue doing that for all of them because here you go. I've got the high pass. I've got, you know, the denoise. I've got the levels and I've got the curves. So hopefully this will help your post-processing. I know it will help mine. I just realized it this week. So um, when I learn more about it, I'll tell you more about it. But from what I know right now, um, this is it. So hopefully that helps you too.